Ladies and gentlemen, this great city of Manchester, and a very special welcome to our viewers joining us around the world. The waiting's over! Here we go! Introducing to you firstly, he's fighting out of the red corner. We're in the blue trunks, two with white weight in the Livingstone, 12 pounds, 6 ounces. I'm undefeated! 19 contests, 19 wins, 5 inside the scheduled distance. Coming to the ring of the former undefeated British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion. He is the reigning WBA Intercontinental Super Middleweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Hammersmith, London, England, it's St. George He's wearing a black trunks, twin with red hands, silver weight in at 11 stone, 13 pounds, 12 ounces. 33 fight record, 31 wins, 22 inside the scheduled distance, and just two defeats. He comes to the ring as the former super middleweight WBC champion of the world. He comes to the ring as the undefeated former British and Commonwealth super middleweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, he has been involved in 11 World Championship contests. He is the reigning and defending WBA and IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World! From Nottingham, England, it's the Cobra, Carl. for the WBA and IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World! Well, Carl. Okay, fellas, well, to you both in the dressing room, you both know I expect. Keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both you watch your heads in close, good luck to you both, touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Well, finally the talking stops. This one's been building and building. So too has the sense of anticipation in this arena. Carl Froch, been here, seen it, done it so many times. No mystery about him. What about this fella? How will he cope with the pressure? Jim, I've been watching him really closely during the preliminaries. He looks absolutely fine. I think we've got two guys in here, Jim, that both believe this is going to be their night. I've been impressed all the way through with Groves, even more impressed now. Froch has tried to strike terror into his heart over the last few weeks. Hasn't worked. He's up for it. Well, there's the Groves jab early. It's a big weapon of his. It's varied and it's spiteful. He said he'd be using it early. He talked about the two right hands he'd land in the first round as well. Froch laughed at him when he revealed that game plan. Something I'd like to remember, Nick, this, this fight was agreed to by Adam Booth, I know he's no longer involved, but Booth is a man who's known for having his fighters' welfare at heart, doesn't take chances with the fighters, the fact that he, who knows George Groves, fancied this job, maybe we should pay some attention to that, look how confidently he started here. I Backing to, him up. I talked to Adam Booth not two hours ago, Jim, he said, I wouldn't have put him in here if I didn't think he could win it. Paddy Fitzpatrick, the new trainer, has implemented that game plan. He's not well known outside of the boxing business, Paddy Fitzpatrick, but he's a smart cookie, knows what he's doing. Countering well with the jab there, Groves, when he leads off, he's not finding the target, but he's, he's landing with the counter, good stuff. And making Frosch miss a couple of times in his opening session as well, getting in a little sneaky little uppercut there, as uh, Howard Foster was telling him to break. Groves. He does not look like a man who's overawed by this occasion, Groves. He looks like a man that's thriving in it. Whether he'll feel like that if Frotch lands a couple of right hands will remains to be seen. But this jab looks a weapon. He's got those long levers. That jab just keeps going and going. I think he's beaten Frotch at his own game in the early stages here. Frotch loves to counter with that left jab. But a little fit. Oh, beautiful right hand! There's the right hand he was talking about. 
So far, he's executing his own plan. But then Frost lands a right hand. Just got a little bit sloppy there, a little bit too adventurous, Groves. But what a good start from him. This is not an overwhelming surprise. He is a fast guy, fast fighter, quick hands. Great timing, Groves. A lot of people thought, you know what? Froch will wear him down, but Groves will make a good start. A lot of people see Groves being ahead after four or five rounds. And Rob McCracken was saying, that's one thing we don't want. We don't want this fella getting a bridgehead and building some confidence. Can a tentative jab from Froch takes the right hand? He's not throwing the jab with confidence, Froch. He's struggling with the range of the... Oh! And this place has just become electrified. Well, he's tempted him with his own punches and he paid the penalty. There's that right hand again. And Frosch looks on oh, in the no. night. He was hit after the bell there. What a sensational start. And Frosch looks shaky as he sits down. And Rob McCracken is going to have to give one of the great talks in one minute. But what can he do to turn this around? Because Frosch looks all over the place in there. I was talking to George yesterday the way out and I said any advice I would give you would show him in the first round that he's not the only puncher in there. Well, George Groves has done that and then some. That was terrific. Well, well, 60 seconds be enough to recover from that. Carl Froch, as we know, has got the toughest chin in the business, but he's throwing punches with no confidence and he's paying the penalty. And he took a big look at how, look at his legs when he comes up there. He has gone there. He has gone there and he took another big shot. But before the bell course. sounded, will one minute be enough to get him back together again? Unbelievable start from George Groves. Well, he delivered on his promise at the press conference. Although he didn't go as far as to say he was going to have Carl Frotch on the floor in the first round. And Frotch was badly shaken. That was not shades of Jermaine Taylor. The other knockdown. I think there's a kind of nervousness about Frotch's boxing even before the knockdown. You know, he's not throwing the punches with the confidence that we expect to see him. He is a worried man. He knows his reputation's on the line. He's been talking big. He's going to have to improve. Groves is terrific at the moment. Well, it's still early days, but Groves is dominating this. And the speed and the timing of that right hand. These little feints are good too. Just making Frogs right. Frogs is looking slow. A certain neck, a few come into the fight thinking you're in a different class from the other guy. It's a recipe for disaster. I wonder if that's the problem here with Frotch. But Frotch is a warrior. He's had to dig deep so many times. But look at the jab. He's playing with that jab. Yeah. There's no confidence in what he's doing. And look at Groves. Groves is stalking him. Taking his time, not rushing it. Well, he knows he's the power. He just looks so fast in there compared to Frotch. Terrific speed and timing and blocked him off there, but Frotch is coming through, landing a couple of good body shots, but one himself. A took, takes a left hook at the end of it. Groves responded. Well, he's really been dragged somewhere horrible here, Carl Frotch. Well, that's the second time Frotch has landed a punch after the call to break. But there's no rhythm in what Carl Frotch is doing. So much adventure from Groves. He managed to get him there with a the right hand counter to the body, but Groves, Groves just looks physically stronger as well. Looks and he like looks, he could bully him. He looks so relaxed, doesn't he? All the strain, all the tension seems to be with Frotch. That was a bit better from Frotch, got a jab through that just snapped the Groves' head back a little bit. Frost just needs to get through this round, Jim, and I'm sure that's what Rob McCracken said, just don't do anything stupid, get he through. But he keeps getting caught by these right hands. Do you know, all through Carl's career, we've been telling him about the left hand been too low. All good fighters, good experienced fighters have talked about it, but he's been getting away with it, so we couldn't criticise it. But the right hand can seem to miss here from Groves. And that's what he's thinking about when he comes forward, because he loves to come forward, but if he does come forward and walks onto one of those right hands over the top, well, we've seen what can happen. 
last few seconds of the round. But there's no confidence in this jab from Frost. Look, he's toying with it as though he doesn't believe it's going to land that. I just pulled him over there. He just needed to get through that, didn't he, for his own confidence, I think. Now, can they continue the rebuilding process? Let's hear what Rob McCracken says. We spoke about. Every time you catch him, don't rush him because he throws it. You're listening to me. Open your mouth. Every time you throw the jab, he rushes in. Move off, OK? If you rush in, he's going to throw that right hand. Look, he's sensible enough now to know he's looking for the right hand all the time. No, do you know what, Nick? No matter what happens from this point on, was. George Groves has made his reputation tonight with what he's done in the first two rounds. Fantastic, he's just, he's bullying Carl Frotch. It's hard to believe, but that's what he's doing. There's no confidence Ten in the jab of Carl Frotch, which he depends so much upon. He still has those power shots, those arm, those heavy-handed punches that he throws. Second but Groves has walked through them three. and answered whatever he's had to take. And Groves was off his stool early. He wanted to get back to this. An unbelievable start. And again, Frotch almost flinching as that jab came in. I mean, Carl Frotch is the toughest guy in the business, but he doesn't like taking punches. And another right hand. hand. So he is not used to this. He's looking for an answer, and he hasn't found it yet. Just pouring at his left eye there as well, Frotch. And there's that left hand, so low. He's a little faint again from Groves. He's come in here with a terrific plan. Right hand again lands. Frotch got another right hand to the body, though. But he hasn't made any kind of a dent on George Groves yet. It'll be interesting to see those bookies odds now. I bet they've swung back the other way drastically. And look at the speed again. Frotch just launched himself in and Groves was gone, long gone. That was class from George Groves, that was downright cheek oh, from George that Groves, jab. and there's some more of the same. Oh, my goodness me, he's making a mug of Carl Frotch in there at the moment. Carl has never been the, the, the best as far as balance is concerned, and I think it's letting him down a little bit. There's a, now and again, he's just looking a little bit closer, but he's a pause with the jab, as though he doesn't believe they're going to land, and they're so easy to counter because there's no stab in them. Caught the again, caught with another right hand. Again, he worked the body with the right hand, Frotch, but he was wide open, and a punch on the break as well from Groves. Well, they're, 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 they're both guilty of that. Good body, body shot. shot. Nice right hook from Groves. He is hitting Frotch so clean so often. Frotch continuing to try and work the body, then finished off with the right hand upstairs, and then he starts to unload, and Groves felt that one. And now Frotch is on the front foot. Another big body shot, big right hook. Well, this is Frotch, he's kind of fine now that he can use his physical strength, but he's taken a big left hook back. But for all that physical strength, it was Groves who pushed him back across the ring. The left the eye of damage. Groves is marked and swelling it's underneath. Swollen. And a, a, swelling, a sw swollen eye is worse than a cut eye because it could close completely. But Groves still having the last word, and that's so important in this kind of fight. looking right hand that Groves saw coming so easily got well out of the way Groves's defensive boxing is spot on his concentration is admirable the jab again falling short from Frosch he can't string anything together Carl Frosch there's no rhythm in what he's doing he needs mistakes from George Groves to punish him for them and he's not making many Absolutely gripping stuff. And here's Paddy Fitzpatrick. Mick Williamson has got to go to work on that eye. Now listen to me. Well, Fitzpatrick speaking to him yesterday. He was so calm. He talked about all George Groves' strengths, all Carl Frotch's weaknesses, and said they match up so well. There was a good response from Frotch for a few seconds in that round, but I still feel Groves looked the boss looked to producing the better work and the main thing is he answered whatever Carl Frotch threw up. He was shaking himself, Frotch knows he shook him up and he went in to try and capitalise on it 
the Groves again considering his lack of experience at this level his defensive boxing is terrific he coped with it well saw the crisis out Ten and got back on to to take his own job again but it was a happier corner from Carl Froch. I wouldn't say it was all smiles, but he looked a little bit more cheerful, like it was starting to come together. And anybody who writes off Carl Froch knows nothing about the man. But it is a worry if you're a Froch supporter, how easily Groves is able to tag him. But look at the jab, he's throwing the jab and pulling his chin out of hands way at the same time. It's as though he's expecting to be counter. You know, it's as though he's worrying more about what's coming back than what he's doing himself. I've never seen Carl Froch like that. I mean, these are flicks. Oh, the double jab, right hand, following up. Froch unable to get out of the way, unable to block anything. Well, George Groves is a hero, Nick. Whatever happens from this point on, was that this has been phenomenal so far. Well, he's made believers of everybody. And all the people, and there's plenty of them, who said Groves has a good chance here. They're looking pretty clever right now. Another double jab going through. Frost can't get out of the way of those. And he's not going to interchange Groves unless he's ready to do something. He's just picking his times. He's not countering everything that Frost does. He's watching them paw with the jab, and then just picking his spots. He knows he's accurate with the right hand. Frost with the low left hand. No, Frost is not trying to put his stamp on this. He's on the back foot and not doing anything about it. Wants to break them up here, they're both kind of holding and wrestling. Yep. Wants to break them up. Howard Foster gave him every chance. Throw it, Frost looking over to the corner there. As though <laughs> for some assurance or some advice, we never see that. Well, you talk about the two trainers, Groves makes a big point about saying look I'm in there on my own and that's how I am whereas Carl says I need Rob McCracken around I'm not here I'm not at the level I'm at if it's not for Rob McCracken and how he needs that guidance and support and encouragement right now he's just second best in all phases little flurries little flashes of defiance from Froch oh, you never shot. ever ever count him out good body shot Ward hot Froch to the body a few times right hand again working When you're leading... Oh, and terrific. absolutely terrific again from Groves and Frosch. It seemed like he had a long time to get out of the way and he couldn't do it. The legs wouldn't take him. Nick, when you're leading with punches that you don't believe in, you're wide open for the counter. He needs more commitment, Frosch. This is what he needs to do. He needs more commitment and more confidence in what he's doing. He's got to believe it's going to work. He doesn't seem to. Yeah, and Howard Foss is having a word now because that was a bit rough. And that just calms everybody down, but again, Jim, just for that moment there that Groves pushed it, was pushed up against the ropes, he just pulled straight back and he's shoving Frotch around this ring. I don't think anybody can quite believe this. I mean, even the people who think, oh yeah, George Groves has got a good chance. You couldn't see Groves dominating the fight the way he is at the moment. No, Nick, let's stop saying Froch is not performing. Groves is not allowing him to perform. I think he's come in here with totally the wrong attitude. I felt that as they walked towards the ring. I felt that with the way he's been speaking recently. His reflexes are slow because of his attitude. He's making mistakes and he's been punished for everyone. Now and again, with his heavy-handed shots, he's getting a little bit of success, but not tying anything together. The right hand, he's, he's moving straight back, he's making mistakes, he's been getting away with for his whole career. He's not getting away with them tonight. Look, I'm stepping straight back there with his hands down. Seconds up, round five. Round five of this 12 round, Carl Froch defending his WBA and IBF super middleweight titles in his 11th world title fight. George Groves from West London in his first and looking like he belongs at world level and looking like he could be here for a long, long time. I think Frosch is trying to get the centre of the ring but there again there's that jab that there's no confidence in it that, but he's taken a solid one, he's been out, his best weapon has been taken away from him. Well, that was a
a bit better from Frotch. But he still took a left hook in the process. Groves has answered everything that's come his way. You can see Groves cocking that right hand. He just wants Carl to make the first move. He's daring him to come in, and this time Frotch does take the bait. And as soon as he does, Groves is quick to tie him up and try and work inside. But that was good work from Frotch. There was strength and, and purpose in what he did there, and that's what's been lacking so far. I think he's trying to claw his way back into this slowly and surely. We haven't even talked about the cards yet, Jim, because there's been such drama, but it's, it's, it's very difficult to make a case for Carl Frotch winning any rounds up till now. No. I've given every round to Groves, one of them by two points. The Frotch is trying to claim the centre of the ring, he's trying to, to make it his kind of fight. But where's the fire? Where's the belief? That right hand missed from Groves. Good right hand again. Working a treat. Well, this is a round that's up for grabs. Probably whoever can win the last minute of this because it's been nip and tuck with both of the moments. So whoever can put a stamp on the last minute here. And every time, Jim, that Frotch threatens like he's going to get on top and deliver one of those whirlwinds of his, Groves finds an answer. He negates it. He takes it away. Carl just can't get any rhythm. This is not a typical Carl Frotch fight at all. He can't bully his opponent, he can't be physical with him. Everything he's, found, he's tried so far, Groves has answered. And his job has pretty much been taken away from him. Better round here from Frotch, but there's that left hook. You have to be impressed the way Groves answers everything that Frotch comes up with. Exactly. But this has been a better round for Frotch, not a lot to split them, but at the moment I'm leaning towards Frotch for the first time. Digging in deep and breathing very heavily through that nose. A little bit of damage there, right on the bell. And he's, he's cut on the scalp as well. It's all going wrong for him, isn't it? Well, Johnny and Richie are ringside alongside us, along with Ed. Well, Richie, what a terrible start for Carl. Yeah, terrible start, start and a great start for George Groves, showing good, decent power. And I think the speed of Groves has certainly startled um, Carl Frotch. But I half expect in that corner, they're expecting a fast start from Groves anyway. But nevertheless, George Groves, very impressive early on, Johnny. Expecting a start that fast. Well, he's, uh, George Groves is youth and, and his pace has done it all. He's now got the respect of Carl Frotch. Uh, Carl probably thought he could walk through George's shots. He now knows he can't. You're now sat there expecting George to land with this big shot. And if he lands, you know uh, Carl's going to be hurt. So it's a case of he's got to slow that pace down. It's slowly starting to slow down. But, you know, George is still keeping in, in, in control. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks, guys. I'll go back to something I said earlier, Jim. When was it that we last saw Carl Frotch looking really, really good against a fresh, young, mid-20s hot shot? You've got to go back a long way. He's actually never done that because the last one he faced was Darrell and that was a struggle. Not a good performance. Some people feel he lost it. I don't. But it wasn't a good performance against a certain type of opponent. Frotch is terrific, but I just think that one of the biggest problems is he's come in here with completely the wrong attitude and he's been having to deal with something he didn't even dream could happen. This is a nightmare. If what you're saying is true, then that campaign, that sustained campaign, that verbal assault, all the belittling of Carl Frotch that George Groves was doing, not giving him any respect, it's worked. It's got into Frotch's head, it's played with his mind. And when you're at this level, little things like that can make a big, big difference. The mind games have been working for George Groves, clearly, because Frotch just doesn't look right. And certainly, once he was put on the floor, everything was up in the air. Frotch is the one grabbing hold there. It's normally the opponent. The only way they can cope with the strength and Frotch. They have a right hand, terrific right hand again. And he felt and it, Frotch, Jim, he felt it. Terrific powers of recovery always. But the punches that catch you high, the punches in the jaw you recover quickly from, the ones that catch you high can have a stunning effect and it takes a little bit of time for the head to clear. That was a terrific shot. There's more, another one. Another one, and three more. And this is big stuff from George Groves. Huge right hands. He has outfought Carl Frotch in that burst.
Yes, he completely outfought him. And he picked every one of those shots so cleanly and accurately. And he's just growing in confidence, if that's possible. And Frotch walks on it more and more. He can't miss with the right hand. There it goes again, he can't miss, he shouldn't throw anything else. You just wonder how much even a real tough guy like Carl Frotch can take of this. Another big right hook getting through there. This is a huge round for George Groves at a time when I thought Frotch's experience would get him into the fight. There it goes again. Defence is non-existent. This is turning into a night of disaster for Carl Frotch. And the worst could be yet to come. Missed that time. Frotch on him straight away, but couldn't sustain the assault. And George Groves dropped his gloves and said, come on. What a terror. Frotch is giving it everything now. But can he land anything clean? Huge pressure, but anything getting through, a right hand I think might have done, but he's still ducking and swaying and then boring him with the head, Groves. You are seeing the foolishness of youth there. We're just seeing the foolishness of youth. That was crazy stuff there from George Groves. He's been so disciplined. I don't believe he did that. He's winning the round with tremendous right hands in this. All he has to do is see the round out and put another one in the bank. Take a rest, get your breath back. Lovely job. Frotch coming forward more and more. But things are getting desperate for him. What a nightmare this has been for Carl Frotch. You've got you in control now. Like what? Don't move. Listen, you're in control because I told you to swing back. But don't stay there too long, OK? You're listening to me. Listen, when he swings back, we're all underneath, OK? You're listening. Relax. Just listen, breathe calmly. Watch. Deep breath. Deep breath, come on. Breathe calmly. Listen to me. Keep doing what you're doing. Right you hand hand. What's that? You'll swing back all the time. I need you to you go know, this is a fight now that is not about tactics. Tactics have nothing to do with this fight. This is terrific action. This is all about now what each fighter can drag out of themselves. We have the fresh George Groves rampant at the moment. We have Carl Frotch struggling, so, so never had close. anything with this to cope with in his whole career, and he doesn't seem quite seem to know what to do about it. Phenomenal stuff Seconds from Groves, but he needs seven. the discipline back, the cool head. Round seven, a lot of people said we wouldn't hear the bell for round seven. Carl Frotch would have dealt with this fella by now. Not happened. Carl Frotch desperately, desperately needs to hurt George Groves and quickly. It's that nice little feint again from Groves. There you have it, I have him five points up. A terrific jab and that put him on his heels there. But Carl Frotch was knocked on his heels by a jab there. But Groves didn't follow up. You have to expect Groves to start conserving a bit. That was a mistake from Groves, is he starting to feel it? Inexperienced again. Now, maybe he heard the call way. for a break, Nick. Maybe, maybe we didn't hear it. Howard Foster's acting on what he called break, and that's why he took that shot. Frotch has to come up with something, and he knows it. Groves has put an awful lot into these first six rounds and he's hit Frotch with so many right hands and he's still there. But Nick, he's relaxed. He's relaxed. He's not forcing what he's doing. Frotch is the one forcing and that's when you use up the energy in what you're doing. Groves is so relaxed, just picking his times, doing that again as I'm speaking. We thought it'd be a good one. Way, way better than I thought it was going to be, I must admit. All credit to George Groves for that. Frotch is just so slow defensively. No reflexes whatsoever. It's as though he doesn't see the punches coming. Can't believe this. Well, let's drag out that old boxing cliche. You get old overnight. Is George Groves making an old man of Carl Frotch here? I mean, these nowhere, are jabs. Nowhere with those jabs. They're, they're jabs that are asking to be countered. Off balance, reaching with them and no confidence that they're going to land. I can only assume he's trying to set up the right hand, walks onto a jab himself. But these jabs, you can only assume it's the right hand he's trying to find a route for. But not far. Beautiful stuff. And Frotch was shaken to his boots again by that right hand. Groves 
Jones always a very, very good finisher, but he hasn't been able to get rid of Frotch yet. It's going to take an awful lot. As the Cobra is still standing. But how much more of this? Getting the body shots in in reply there, Frotch. It's almost like now he's said, well, I can't stop these right hands. I'm just going to have to take them and accept them and try and get some damage done myself. The Grove's so relaxed, it's as though the punches are coming out of their own accord, so perfectly timed, everything done at the right time, and he's got his, his head screwed back on again, for pleased to say. Well, his timing is outstanding. It's breathtaking. I think Frotch is expecting to be countered. I mean, look at the jab, reaching like with that. it, and he has countered. But he's pushed him back right on the belt. And again, George Groves. Didn't really take anything too heavy there. Well, David Hay warned us, he told us Carl Frotch was not going to have it all his own way, far from it. David, you've been proved spot on so far. Yeah, I, you never know how someone's going to cope at top level until they're at top level. And George, you'd never in a million years believe George was the challenger in this fight. He looks like the season, he looks like the two-weight world champion here. And Carl Frotch looks like the challenger, missing widely and uh, not getting a grip of the fight. You know, George, he's doing everything I've seen him do in training. I said before, I wasn't sure whether he could do this at this level. I've seen him in, in the gym doing this stuff. Everything he's doing here, I've seen him do it for years. And I just, you know, I didn't know whether he could do it on the big stage. And he's proved tonight, so, so no matter what happens from here on out, he's proved that he can perform at world level and at an amazing rate, pace. Everything has been punched perfect so far. You know, a few more rounds to go, but he's doing everything right here. Absolutely spot on. And you called it, David. You know him better than anybody, or as well as anybody. He is, is stepped up, whatever happens now, he has stepped up to elite level. The right hand, oh, good, he's just clear. Oh, sorry, I saw that one, that one was in the chin. That was a beauty from Frost, that was bang on the chin. And again, he went in I'm with his head the there, here. Groves. That, he seems OK, but that was bang on the chin. It's going to take something like that from Frotch now. He's so far behind, you would think. There he is again, and he's shaking him up again, and Groves is in a bit of trouble now. And Frotch trying to bully him and rough him up. And Howard Foster's got his hands full here. Well, this is a time Groves needs a cool head. Calvin in with the eight there with a the forearm there. That was a little bit cynical, the forearm and the elbow. So, but I think uh, Groves will be happy with a little bit of respite because I think he's been caught with a couple of solid punches in this round. A sign of desperation, perhaps, there from Frotch. He'll do anything now to drag himself back into this round eight. But just a couple of signs in the last couple of rounds. But Groves is starting to feel the weight of these Frotch punches. He has come off the pace a little bit, Groves, but he's still doing the right thing. Good work there. Slips inside that right hand, got him with a nice sharp left hand counter as well. And then very quick to time up, but Frotch getting free, and Frotch starting to rough him up a little bit. George Groves cannot let that happen. You don't let Carl Frotch get on top of you and overwhelm you. That's asking for trouble. Well, inexperience can be his only enemy tonight, George Groves. He's doing silly things now, he's forgetting about his defences. He wants to show the macho, but there's no need for that. He's macho enough for everybody. This is around us in the balance, Frotch started well, Groves is coming back at him. Good solid jab from Groves. Well, this is another round at the moment, it seems up for grabs, they've both produced. Frotch has gone right off the gas, then he launched in, and it was a bit rough, and a bit crude. Another big swinging right hand from Groves. Sends the spray in, but then look at the response from Frotch and more trouble. You know what? That could and be a point off. That could be a say, point I off. Think, I think that could be a point off. He heard noise warning the two of them, but Carl Frotch was the one there, and that's the last thing he can afford tonight. But that was cynical. He heard the, the call to break, and he carried on with three punches. That could have, should have been a point off. Well, he'll, he'll resort to anything now, Frotch. It's desperation time. 20 seconds left in round eight. Groves tags him again with one of those right hands over the top. Frotch charges after him. Groves gets away again. Doesn't want to stand and trade with Frotch in this mood because he's desperate. Yeah, but there are times when Groves has actually out-fought Carl Frotch. 
That I'm swinging towards, I think, the best punches Froch landed tonight in that round were illegal punches. So maybe this round, which was close, is turning back Groves' way. Tough one to score, this one. Absolutely breathtaking stuff, this. Stick this one on the list of great domestic super middleweight title fights that we've seen. Catch a breathe. No, well, Frotch made that round his kind of fight. They both had good, good spells. But once again, Groves, who made silly mistakes. Now, that punch wasn't as bad as his first thought because it kind of caught him in the back of the head. So it wasn't a legal shot. Yeah, that just kind of knocked him off balance. But he's losing concentration, and that was the kind of cynical elbow from Frotch. So Frotch, lucky not to have a punch, a point deducted in that round. So Rough so house from both close. guys. It's that kind of fight, and I tell you, Nick, what a fight it is. It really is. There's not a whole lot of respect between the two of them in there right now. But I hope there is, and there should be, when it's all done and dusted. Because this has been an epic fight so far. And they're booing Howard Foster, but Howard Foster is doing absolutely the right thing just to try and calm this down. Because it's, it's been threatening to overheat once or twice. I don't think, even if he loses a point, Froch, I don't think it makes much difference now. I can't see him getting a points win here, but don't forget, you know as well as I do, Jim, you know better than I do, Froch is dangerous till the last few seconds. Just ask Jermaine Taylor. Yeah, well, normally, you know, he saves stuff in the tank. When he was going through the Super 6, he saves stuff in the tank. He hasn't been allowed to do that. Groves has been on him right from the start and made him fight in every round. The pace is slowing down now. So, oh, beautiful shots again from Groves. Oh, Frotch knows left that hook. coming, but he can't get out of the way, and there was a little left hook got thrown in there just for good measure as well. Well, Frotch certainly has proved his toughness. He says he can't be knocked out. I'm beginning to believe him because he's been hit with several knockout punches. And they're still oh. coming, still coming from Groves. And still, Frotch is standing tall, and then lands a right hand of his own, and Groves has wobbled. Groves is in big trouble now, and Frotch senses it. And Frotch is going for the finish, because Groves' legs have gone. And Groves hanging on here, just holding and spoiling, trying to buy some time. But Frotch smells blood here. I think Frotch needs to finish it here. He really does. Groves, and Groves is, is in right trouble. Thing. He's taken another one, and another. And Howard Foster has stopped it. Wow, that is going to be controversial. Groves is disgusted. Groves is furious. And there's going to be some controversy here. Frotch had him in trouble, no question about that. But he was so far ahead, George Groves. Was he in so much trouble that it required a stoppage? That's the question that's going to be asked over and over again. Well, considering the punches that both men took leading up to that, considering what was on the line, I feel that the referee could have let her go on a little bit longer to see if Groves could have taken account, could have grabbed hold of Frotch. Frotch looked at times to be in bigger trouble than, than, than Groves was in at the time of the stoppage. I don't like to criticise referees, it's a tough job they have, but I think once they stay here tonight, the fact that Groves was so far ahead, I would have let it go a little bit longer just to see how he was going to cope with the crisis. He was in a crisis, but that's what this fight was about. This fight was just about one crisis after another, and I would like the referee just to have given him a little bit of time until we were sure. A fight like that shouldn't have been stopped until the referee was sure. He couldn't have been sure because it wasn't a sustained Beating it screams the, the rematch, Jim. Taken. It screams rematch. It has to be done again. Groves, who came into booze, is now saluting the crowd and listen to the response he's got here. He's won everybody over tonight. Well, I tell you, I hope there is a rematch because that was phenomenal, but it won't spring the same surprise. I don't know if Carl Frost will want any more of this. It's been a tough career. Groves is going over, we'll see it. Yeah, yeah, this response. is still looking pretty chippy in there, isn't it? It really is. I don't know if he... I, don't know, I think Groves is going over trying to be friends. Well, all three judges had Groves ahead. One 78-73, but two of them 76-75.
That was a close I can't, call. I can't see that. What, what no. were they looking at? What were they at? No, I'm sorry. And it, it, it's all threatening to kick off in here, which we don't need. And everybody just needs to calm down. Paddy Fitzpatrick is embracing George Groves. And Carl Frotz has been led away to his corner as well. We don't need blood, bad blood here because that was a terrific scrap and we need to do it again. But what a shame. What a shame it was stopped like that. And as you say, Jim, you, you have to feel for a referee because he's got a split second to make a decision. But this did seem early. Yeah, but in a fire this magnitude, it was, it was hurt. It was in a crisis. He hadn't been on the floor. He wasn't standing with his back to the ropes, having his head rolled back with punches. He was taking punches and he was struggling to cope with. But he was doing what a boxer should do. He was trying to keep a moving target. He was all over the place. Look, this is not sustained punishment. Big shot there, which shook him to his boots. Frotch has been on the floor, and there, 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 there's the big shot to the, to, to the temple. I mean, this is not a sustained beating when you look at what the both men have been dishing out. Groves was doing the wrong things there, no question. But no, for me, that was too early, too early. Groves was trying to cope with the pressure he was under. Granted, he was doing the wrong things. He was fighting back when he should have been fighting back, I felt all he could do was throw this away and throw in experience, unfortunately, and a little bit of refereeing. That's what's happened. I'll be honest, Nick, I'm not sure he would have gone through that crisis. I'm not sure he would have got through it because he was badly shaken, but he deserved time to let us find out. Yeah, absolutely. He was unravelling, there's no question about that, and Frotch is a brutal finisher as well. But... I wonder if Howard Foster will look back at that and say, I wish I'd just delayed it. But then again, if you do and he I gets mean, hurt, then everybody's going to yeah, criticise him I for mean, letting it go on too long. It's a tough the, one. The, the were terrific punches he was taking and he was getting caught cleanly on the chin. It was worrying. I'm not, I'm not saying it wasn't a worrying scenario. I wouldn't like to have been the one who had to deal with it. But what was at stake? I mean, Groves, if he had gone on the floor, you know, the, the, the eight seconds could have cleared his head. If he had like a hold of Carl Frotch, if... With, through his lack of experience, if he can come up with the, the right answer, he did everything wrong here. He should have been grabbing hold, he was trying to punch back. That's the macho thing of youth when experience would have told him take a knee, grab hold of an opponent, nullify, go through the crisis. He did all the wrong things. And there, a uh, couple of punches still going in after the fight was over. But what a terrific fight! And Groves. Leaves this ring with a reputation. Carl Frosch, to his credit, has beaten a man tonight who was better than him tonight. And I suppose that's what being a champion is all about. And he may well have gone on and finished that job. But George Groves deserved the opportunity to try and weather that storm and ride it out. And I go back again to those scorecards, Jim. 276-75, that's just staggering. Absolutely staggering. Groves was outstanding tonight, that's what we're going to remember out of this one, that and the stoppage. Frotch has got away with one tonight. I'm starting to worry about scored cards tonight, I don't know what the answer is, do we let them fight to the death or whatever, I mean this is, I don't, how can anybody only have Groves one point up? Carl Frotch's corner knew it, it was well away from him. Now, still, we don't need points, don't matter anyway, Frotch got the stoppage. And I sympathise with the referee, Howard Foster, because it was a tough call, but what was at stake and, uh, and what had been dished out leading up to that? A, a situation that I would have hated to be in, I would have hated to be the one who had to make that decision. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll, I'll re-ask ask the question that you just asked there, what on earth has tonight taken out of Carl Frotch? Yeah, he's hung on to his belts. But at what cost? That was a hard, hard night for him. An absolutely terrific scrap. Really good stuff. More than surpassed its billing. And I hope these two can just show a bit of respect to each other at the end of all this. Because that was too good a fight for it to end on a sour note. Sadly, it has ended on that note. And this will reverberate for weeks and weeks and weeks. The bottom line is Carl Froch came in with two belts. And he's going to take them home. But you can hear what these fans here in Manchester think about that. Ladies and gentlemen, one minute and 33 seconds of the ninth round. Groves in no position to defend himself, therefore your winner, and still the WBA and IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, the Cobra, Ha Fra. And let's show our appreciation for St. George Groves.
have to say the studio guests are outraged by that decision. Glenn McCrory, your reaction? Uh, absolutely disgusted. Uh, unbelievable. I, I, just, I still can't believe it. You know, why didn't they stop the, why didn't they stop the fight in the first round when Carl Frost was heavily put on the floor, got up and was wobbling about? They didn't stop it because they know Carl Frost is the champion and the tough guy. So then why, when George Groves is miles ahead, winning this fight hands down, the first time he wobbles a bit, the referee gets him in a headlock and drags him off. I mean, despicable. Absolutely rubbish. I mean, Khan. Yeah, it's a very bad decision. I mean, this is a world title, you know what I mean, fight. You know, there's two world titles on this fight, so at least let the boys have it out, you know. I mean, I know the Groves looked hurt, but the referee stepped in a bit too early, in my opinion. Uh, maybe he would have taken a knee, but yeah, I think uh, in a world title fight, you never see that. Fair to say you're outraged, David Hay. Yeah, you know, this is a world title fight. This is for the, you know, the, the biggest prize in their division. And to stop a fight like that was, uh, it, it, was it was farcical, to be honest. You know, um, as you say, Carl was in bad shape in the first round. The referee gave him the benefit and was right to do so as he carried on fighting. You know, who knows uh, if, how George would have fared if he was been allowed to carry on. He outgunned him in every department, didn't he? Every department was just fantastic, absolute. You know, I, I said leading up to this fight, I thought Carl, George Groves would cause a shot, would give us some surprise, and eventually Carl Frosch would get him. But, you know, Carl Frosch was getting on top, but he certainly didn't have him. And anybody that had fought the way George Groves had for a world title fight deserved at least to go on the floor, at least to be given the benefit of the doubt, at least to even go out on his shield. You know, this is the boxing game. You know, it's a tough game, and when you've got a shot and you're ahead in a world title fight, the first time you wobble, you should not be stopped. How would Foster look at that? He got that one wrong, I think. When he re re watches the tape back, you know, he'll realise I got that one way wrong. Um, but I'm just, I'm, you know, it was a, it's a strange scenario, you know, I'm friends with both of the guys, and what I wanted from this fight was a clear victor, a clear victor, someone to win clearly. I didn't really want this controversy, you know, because it sort of leaves a great fight as it was, as it was going on. It leaves a bit of taste in your mouth. You, 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 yeah. I mean, it was a terrific we, fight, we was terrific it. drama. It, it was I mean, it was great drama. Fight. A lot of people thought, uh, thought she was going to walk through Groves, but Groves raised to the occasion. And, you know, you see uh, in the early rounds when he was putting the pressure and hurting Frotch, you see Frotch looking into a corner. You know, for advice from the corner, you know, you saw that. So, but it's a shame the way the fight's been ended. I mean, it was a cracking fight till the refugee stepped in. The crowd were outraged. They, they booed. They shouted obscenities. At well, the, you know, the we're, we're outraged. Yeah. You know, you know, we've saw the, we've seen the fight. Every twenty thousand people seen the fight, and mm. I think to a man, every one thought that was a bad decision. So why didn't the referee? We can't all get it wrong. We can't all no, be wrong in this situation. I know. Situation. I know. I know. But the only, only difference is only one person whose opinion matters. Exactly. Exactly. Lot of and and as you said, a lot, there, a lot you of got it going out there, and I think that just says it all. Okay, let's hear from the two guys right now. Well, congratulations to both of you on such a thrilling fight. It was savage. It was thrilling, Carl. But what do you make of that ending? Yeah, I thought it was a fair enough stoppage. There was times where, you know, I hit him with two shots at the end, and I felt I had a couple of more free shots on him. And I think when a fighter feels like he's got a free shot on, a, on another fighter, I was lining him up for the right hand, the uppercut went in. I honestly had a free shot on him. He was struggling, he was looking at the floor, his head was turning away. And it's that last shot, that last one shot or two shots that could do some serious damage in this sport. The referee's in there, the referee is six inches away from the, the fighters. And he looks into the fighter's eyes, he looks where the, eye, where, the, where the opponents are looking at the floor, he looks at the composure, and he has to make a split second, second decision. So, you know, you shouldn't be asking the fighter if I thought it should have been stopped. Of course I thought it should have been stopped. And of course George thinks it shouldn't have been stopped. Do you have sympathy for him? It's the referee's decision. I don't have any sympathy for him from there because it's boxing, you've got to put it in the referee's hands. The referee ha it has to protect the fighters. And I had a free hit on him. You can't let me have a free hit on someone, it's dangerous. George, how badly hurt were you at the end? He caught me with a good shot. But that should never have been a stoppage. If you look, probably knew enough every round beforehand, I had Cole buzz and buzz much heavier. And because he's got this warrior image, I think he got the benefit of the doubt a lot of the time. And because for some reason I've got this chinny image, it was stopped prematurely in my opinion. I'd just like to say that I've got immense respect for Carl Frutch. I have done in the whole build-up. I think now he would respect me a little bit more after my performance tonight. I tried to shake his hand right at the end and he wasn't interested. He cooled down for a little bit and then he, he came and he spoke and he said some kind words.
but to come into an arena being booed because I stuck to a game plan. I had to come in and upset Carl Frutz, tell him the truth, and Ed, I told you what was going to happen in the first three rounds. We can watch it back, we know what happened. Really and now I'm getting cheered. I'm getting cheered in front of all these amazing fans, boxing fans. I'm so proud to, to come in and give this display and for all these people to, to believe in me. I know I'm going to be a great fighter and I feel I was... I had it taken away from me tonight, unjustly. But I'll be back. I'll be back fitter and stronger. Eddie needs to make this happen. I'm just gutted. I'm truly gutted. Carl, did George win your respect tonight? As a fighter, I've never had disrespect for him. I've always respected him as a boxer. I said that on the build-up. But as a person, it was, it was antagonising me and being very disrespectful and being rude and, and, and silly and a bit childish. And I said all that, so I said what I had to say. And I, I'm a man of my word, I stand by my conviction. I'm not going to go in there and have a fight with him. I respect him as a fighter. He's a good fighter, and I know what he can do. I've seen him fight time and time again. He's coming to the fight unbeaten. And he's definitely earned more respect for me as a fighter in there tonight. More respect. I already have respect for me as a fighter. As a person, he's been very, very childish, very disrespectful, and a little bit stupid and downright rude. So I've had a problem with that. So until I shake his hand, I wanted to have a chat with him, have a talk to him, mano a mano, tell him what I thought of him, ask him my opinion on, ask him his opinion on what, what he said and why he said it, and deal with it like men. And we had a chat, he gave me an answer. I was satisfied with that. You know, he was trying to get under my skin for a reason. It didn't work. And I've got a lot more respect for him as a fighter, and I've got a little bit more respect for him as a person because he's held his hand up proudly tonight. He's coming here, he's had a really good go. He got booed into the arena, yes. And he's getting cheered out of the arena. And that's fair enough, because he's, he's, he's just given a champion of the world a really, really good fight at 25 years old. When I was 25 years old, I honestly say I couldn't have done that. I turned professional at 25. So for him to come here and do that, you've got to give him respect for what he did in there. But if somebody's going to misbehave outside and be silly, then I'm not going to all of a sudden beat him in the ring like I said I was going to. And let's not forget who won here. Let's not forget who defended the titles. The referee made a decision there. The referee jumped in and stopped the fight based on his decision. It was a very, very educated decision from Howard Foster. He knows what he's doing. He's a very experienced referee. When he watches the fight back, he might think differently. He might not change his mind. But one thing's for sure, he can come again, George. He's 25, 26 years old. He's just, he's just give a, a, a world champion a really, really good fight. And I, I, honestly, I've got respect for him as a fighter. And, you know, he's starting to turn it around as a person. Me and George, I used to be good friends with him. That's David Hay. Then all of a sudden, when the fight was made, he was being a little bit stupid. But... You know, this isn't cat and dog, and this isn't like Mickey Mouse stuff now, where we're going to just carry it on for, forever. We're two men, we've gone in here, we've given each, give each other a good fight, and it was a good fight, and we've given the crowd and the paying customers at home a fantastic fight and entertaining evening. They've had their money's worth from myself and from George Groves. So I think we both deserve respect, and we're both fighters. Of course we respect each other. Of course we do as fighters. It doesn't matter if we get on out of the ring. When we're in that ring, that four-cornered circle, that nobody in this arena really knows what fighters go through and what we do. They come here like old gladiator fans to watch two gladiators at work and try and potentially do some serious damage to each other. And that's what we're doing there tonight. We're going there and we fought like warriors. So, you know, everybody's got to have respect for both of us. George, you were outspoken in the build-up but you're content that you backed it up with a world-class performance. If we, if we go back and look at what I said, I, in Cole's words, I didn't speak about him in a positive light enough, and I was critical of certain aspects of his boxing. I feel I exploited a lot of those um, weaknesses tonight. I'm just gutted. I'm just gutted. Eddie, maybe we'll get the rematch, we'll sort it out somewhere else. Yeah. Hello to Eddie Hearn, there will be calls for a rematch, won't they? It was a very exciting fight and controversial. Listen, whatever you think of the, of the decision, both fighters need a huge amount of respect. You know, like Carl says, no one knows, both fighters put everything on the line tonight. You know, they both deserve a huge amount of respect. For George, he was sensational. You know, I think he shocked everyone by his performance, everyone knew how good he was. But for Carl, you know, you're talking about a man who just dug so, so deep. He looked beaten in the first round. You know, he went down. I've never seen him down like that before. George Groves did that. And for these two guys to go at it like they did, the rematch is the one that makes sense. I think everyone would love to see it. Carl, 
How badly hurt were you in the first round and did you underestimate George a little bit? I'll be totally honest, I've only just remembered that I got put down in the first round, so I must have been quite badly hurt. I'm honest enough to admit that. I came out cold, it caught me flush with a shot. I don't actually know what hit, I think, I think I stayed there, I think my feet held and hit me with a right hand as I backed up. And it was a good shot, but you know what I'm like, I get up, I carry on, I spit out the dust and I get stuck in. It's as simple as that. And that's why everybody loves me, you know, there's a handful of people here tonight who are booing, but I gave everybody in this arena tonight massive entertainment. I can't be held responsible for what the referee does. He's a, he's a professional experienced referee. So you've got to give those fighters a break, you know, and appreciate that we're in there to do our job and the referee's in there to do his job. And that's what we both did tonight, and that's what the referee did. George, will the public demand the rematch? I think so. I think, I think we put on a good display. I think everyone here, although they're not happy with the decision, they probably would have enjoyed the fight. I want to say a special thank you to Paddy Fitzpatrick, who helped me in a time of need. Ten weeks out from a fight, I went to him and said, I've got a big fight coming up and I need your help, and he did. Gary O'Connor over there at State of Mind Fitness. He's been sensational. He's completely wiped his diary to take care of me. And everyone else has helped me get to this position. Do you feel like a moral victor? I'll be back. I'll be back. I know that. Just like when I spar people, when I fight people, I get confidence. I came into this fight supremely confident. If we had a rematch, I'd feel no different. I'll come back better, stronger, and I hope I get that chance. Well done to both of you. Well, he came in as the villain of the piece, didn't he? But George Groves walks away a hero, and surely, 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 that has got to happen again. Reaction from our studio guests coming up in just a couple of minutes' time.